we don't have anything to go on, but what is your philosophy? Texas philosophy about the trading deadline coming up, and I'm going to talk about Watson, but other possible veterans you can get for draft picks. Well, the thing about that is, is that I, myself, I don't even think anything about that. That's Nick. Uh, Nick takes care of that. We don't talk about that as a staff. Uh, Nick and I would talk about that when things come up. But uh, as of right now, my focus is just on coaching the football team. So the, so the conversation between you two, you and Nick, would be like, you know, what would the impact be if this person's moved and that person? Yes, if that was coming up, then we would have that conversation. And we always have had that conversation, everything that's ever happened. We have that conversation before things are ever done. As far as practice today, you expect to designate Tyrod for return, have him practice and launch his four-day window? We'd designate him as a return. Um, as far as the status for the game, uh, that's still up in the air right now. How do you split the reps between him and Davis in the, in the current situation? Uh, Davis will get the reps today. Tyrod, we're just easing him back into practice uh, just to see where he's at. Tyrod's a veteran. He's been around here. He doesn't have to have all the reps. Davis needs the reps. If Davis is going to be playing this week as our starting quarterback, and right now he is, as we move into the week, uh, if Tyrod, we feel good about where Tyrod is at, then we'll give him some of his reps. But him being a veteran quarterback, that's not an issue. You said that uh, um, Davis is uh, doing what you want aside from when he turns the ball over, but when he completes passes, he's one, they're some of the shortest passes in the league. So is that by design, the way you guys are calling the offense, you want more short passes, you're not trying to create as many explosive plays right now? No, we're trying to get those explosive plays. We just haven't done that. And, again, being behind the chains have also had an effect on how we approach getting the ball down the field. If we had stayed above the chains in first and second downs a lot more than what we've had been, we'd be getting the ball down the field. But we're trying to get back to manageable situations and more so than trying to get the ball down the field. You made a move uh, at right guard, putting in uh, Justin McCray there. Uh, what, how do you evaluate that position right now? And is Justin the guy? Kind of well, we're going to still look at it this week in practice, and we'll base that just on practice. Out of the game, uh, obviously we felt like we needed to make a change when we did with Max, and then uh, we'll go into practice this week uh, doing the same thing as far as uh, who we feel like should be at that position. What are some of the things specifically Max needs to improve on to get back in that role? Well, just be more consistent and be more, more consistent in taking care of his one-on-one -on -one battles. And, uh, you know, last week was a tough, tough day for him early, and uh, we felt like we needed to make the change to do that. But he just needs to be more consistent in taking care of those one-on-one -on -one battles. Since Mills needs the reps, what's the point going back to Taylor if you do and taking those reps away from him? Well, he needs the reps if only because if Tyrod cannot go, he's going to be the quarterback. Tyrod doesn't have to have those reps. If uh, Tyrod, if we knew Tyrod was healthy to play uh, going into this week, then he would get those reps. Looking back at how he played in those six quarters, do you think he would benefit trying to get the ball down the field with his experience? And considering how his mobility has to be taken into account by defense. Well, that, that's exactly how he's played the game. And if you remember uh, some of those plays that we got down the field, they were out, he was out of the pocket when he was making those plays down the field. And it's, you know, one on one battles, getting Aaron Donald blocked or attempting to slow him down. How task is well, we won't have one-on-ones with him most of the day. We'll have two blocking him most of the time. Just uh, the type of caliber player, when you think about you know, coach football all the time, where does he rank? What do you think you see from him with qualities? I mean, he's one of the top two or three defensive guys in the game at his position, has been since he's came into the league, and uh, nothing has changed. Uh, obviously, we're not going to allow him to wreck our game, so obviously – if you put one-on-one -on -one situations on him, it doesn't matter who he's against. He usually wins those battles. What do you think about uh, what Matthew Stafford has been doing this season? Uh, he's been having a really good year. He's had great years before. Uh, you know, he's on a different football team, a different environment. Uh, uh, they're off to a really good start, and uh, you know, he's playing well right now. David, the teams that are successful right now all have good quarterbacks in place. Why is this quarterback has such a big impact and it's so necessary to make sure you have that position taken care of? He handles the ball 99% of the time on offense, and everything, he directs everything. Everything goes because of him. It starts with him. Uh, that position doesn't necessarily have to win the game for you, but that position has to do the things that put position, put people in position to win games, and that's why that's so important and critical. And that's why having veteran guys around it that have been there and done that you know, and another thing too is is with veteran quarterbacks as opposed to rookie quarterbacks who haven't had that experience. When adversity hits, you know, veteran guys understand that, and the guys that are playing around them understand that and know how to deal with those kinds of things. 
You mentioned Eric Murray was in on those dime packages to, from his time on the field. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at him, maybe possibly growing more in the role at safety? Uh, yes, for, for sure. Why have the uh, screen plays, wide receiver screen specifically, been so ineffective? Uh, we haven't blocked it very well. We've had some miscommunication there, blocking the right guy. Uh, early in the year, we, were, we had a couple with Brandon and uh, with Danny. Uh, we haven't executed those. The way Hill has played for you so far overall is a lot of uh, He's done very well. He's been one of the leaders on this team. Uh, he plays probably more snaps than anybody would have on defense because of how valuable he is on special teams. Uh, he's playing very well for us. How with, to get Cooks involved back in the offense? He's tied to the lead right now and turned down perception of a guy like that. Why I'm sorry? Brandon Cooks is tied to the lead. Well, if we stay above the change the way we should do, and when we got third in manageable situations, uh, he's obviously a guy that we go to, and it's been very effective there. Uh, we've just got to get in more of those type situations to be able to execute and do those, and he's been a big part of that when we've been in those situations. David, you've played with some really good quarterbacks, coached some really good quarterbacks with different teams, so you know how valuable it is. How valuable is it for the Texans to get that position solidified, whether it's with the guys you got? Somewhere else. It's extremely important. It's extremely important for the entire football team, you know, to know that when you go out there, that particular guy is going to do his job and give you a chance to win. You know, I feel like in, in Davis, we, we have a guy like that, that in the future could be that kind of guy. Uh, obviously, we got Tyrod right here for a reason, and uh, he's been there and done that also. Unfortunately, the injury kept him from, from being able to, to do what we feel like we were going to do and take us to where we need to be going right now. But it's very, very important to have that mental mistakes that have been coming over the weeks, is there a point where you're trying to fix those things and then like a player could almost overthink it and then commit the pit, can commit the mistake again? And, you know, you, you said a word there about overthinking is is is, is very, very important. And, and what happens, I think, so much that they don't overthink, they start to press. And when they start to press, you know, you, you, you kind of get yourself muddied in what's going on. And you, you can't go on to the next play after having a bad play. And I think Guys start to press when those kinds of things happen. Is that why you started taking guys out and kind of it, them after them Exactly right, Sarah. Exactly right. And and basically, we got to find that right combination in the, of guys that, that understand that it's the next play mentality, but the next play has got to be the right play. What what stands in the way? What stands in the way of being able to get past the muddiness? Just continue to do the process that we're going to continue to coach the fundamentals, and it will come. You're welcome.